Looks like someone's managed to take down a brutal nine-round event with World Eaters. Let's take a look at World Eaters army lists in general, what was used to claim the scores for this particular victory, and a few other armies that have been doing well recently. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd talk about some World Eaters army lists, and in particular the very impressive achievement of Anthony Vanilla taking down a grand tournament with the new World Eaters, I believe their first win of anything near this size since the balanced data slate. World Eaters perhaps haven't been having such a bad time of it in 10th edition recently. They might have had a bit of an unexciting start to 10th edition, though it seems that their core rules were definitely good enough for them to be strong. Their Berserker Warband gives them a plus 1 strength and plus 1 attack on the charge, kind of similar to their rules in 9th edition. And they have their curious mechanic of the Blessings of Corn, rolling a very unholy 8 dice for blessings from their deity. And depending on your results, you get the choice of big damage and durability buffs, plus some awesome speed buffs like plus 2 movement and advance and charge to throw them into combat nice and early. Perhaps most terrifying out of any of that, though, is threatening to resurrect the Red Angel himself. Generally in 40k, they've been doing quite well over the past few weeks since the balanced data slate came out. In the early stages of 10th edition, they had a win rate of around about 41%. Their units were just a bit overcosted for what they did realistically, and died too easily. But now it seems that after Games Workshop hit them with some fairly nice points decreases, it now seems that they're the right kind of blend of extreme violence and at least some durability. And the big tournament win rate is now sitting at around about 52%, one of the better ones in the game in general. Despite this, up to now it doesn't seem that anyone had been able to crack a grand tournament with them yet. They're generally seeming like an army that does at least consistently quite well in most events, but often coming on stock later in tournaments when they're facing the best lists by the best players around. Despite their strength, they are also a fairly niche faction, not really collected by that many people, kind of partly just due to the amount of collectors there are in the community being a very new army. It looks like they're currently the 19th most played faction in big tournaments, despite clearly being quite strong. I say at the moment within their index, Games Workshop have actually done at least fairly well to keep the vast majority of their most iconic and unique kits usable right now. Pretty much everything besides the generic Chaos Space Marine stuff is really quite playable, and lists often tend to go heavy on these options here. Angron is basically auto include. it's rare to see a tournament list without him, he brings excessive violence, a fair amount of toughness, and perhaps scariest of all, the ability to potentially come back if you can roll a 666 on the blessings table, that can be absolutely game changing. Otherwise, both 8-bound types tend to do a fair bit of melee heavy lifting, maybe either using Rapid Ingress or Scouting Up with Lord Invocatus or the regular 8-bound version. Berserkers tend to crop up in somewhat small numbers, partly as escorts for characters like the Master of Executions. Rhinos are the standard way to get them there. And otherwise, for other HQs, the Master of Executions with the Berserker Glaive is in very near auto-include territory as well. Massively scary melee, plus fights first. And beyond that, both the Juggernaut Lords are quite nice. The standard one's quite nice to bear that favour of corn enhancement, the one that allows you to re-roll the Blessings dice. Can be great to ensure that you can get the advance and charge when you most need it, or resurrect Angron perhaps more devastatingly. And Lord Invocatus to scout up the board with some 8-bound perhaps. Otherwise, Jackals and Spawn can be nice to access some cheap units to do secondaries or sit on safe primaries. The Lord of Skulls has seen competitive play and has cropped up in a few top lists, we'll see one later. Though for other areas of the Index, things maybe aren't quite as exciting. The Terminators and Demon Prince are kind of rarely played competitively, and most of the other Demon Engines maybe aren't all that favoured, maybe with the Maul Fiend being one of the more standout ones there and Hellbrute can at least do some funky things with extra activations, though he's still perhaps a bit limited by his raw damage and defence. With all that in mind, let's take a look at the World Eaters Big Tournament winning list. This was run by Anthony Vanella, who used it to take first at the California Cup. Really quite a big tournament with well over 90 players, and really quite a lot of gruelling games in this one. It's a massive great big 9 round event it seems, with a quarter, semi and grand final after the main round ends. It's definitely no surprise to see this guy at the head of the World Eaters list that managed this win. He's certainly a well-known and respected player, with lots of Grand Tournament wins already, seeming to be a specialist in playing aggressive armies, and he has made a fair bit of content over on the Art of War channel. Starting off with characters for the list though, no surprise to see Angron here. Pretty much auto-include, enormous danger, big revives, and pretty good for taking out any one important thing in the enemy army. And he's backed up by Lord Invocatus with his big scout moves, the Lord on Juggernaut with the favourite of Corn for re-rolling those blessings, and the Master of Executions with the Berserker Glaive. It is very nice to see Angron in pride of place here, as is fully fitting of a Demon Primarch. 
is 415 points, has fairly impressive stats both on the offensive and defensive, and moves very quickly with a 14-inch movement plus fly to get him into position to hit the enemy as soon as the game starts. Certainly with the World Eater's movement boost, like the plus one to move and the advance and charge, he can very easily be making first turn charges against the enemy army. When he gets there, he either has 8 attacks with a big d6 plus 2 damage, or a big 18 with strength 8, ap2 and damage 2 that's utterly ruinous to marines, never mind any other benefits he might get from the blessings table. And he might well often be re-rolling the hit roll with his wrathful presence rule, though you can change that out for plus 1 to charge or getting extra attacks from nearby units. In general, it might make sense for him just to throw himself towards the enemy's most important units, destroy them early in the game, and then be the unit that really makes himself a spectacle for the enemy to target down early. It's going to absorb loads of fire with toughness 11, a 2 plus save, and a 4 plus invulnerable. And then that could give you several turns worth of rolling to see if you can get him back on the board. The odds really aren't too bad if you take into account Berserker rerolls and the favour of Corn reroll ability. Otherwise, perhaps one of the other most staple HQs is the Master of Executions with the Berserker Glaive, 105 points in total including that enhancement. He gives you fight first, so basically makes his unit very difficult to charge for the enemy. Swings with the Axe of Dismemberment, with 5 attacks at Strength 7, AP 2, Damage 2, Devastating Wounds and Precision. And if you manage to get him in combat with any sort of character unit, you get to re-roll hit rolls and wound rolls. An absolutely massive deal when you've got Devastating Wounds. The Berserker Glaive for an extra 25 points gives you plus 1 to your attacks and damage, taking him really to the next level. And if you make a charge move and potentially include the Berserker Warband benefit, then on average that's going to be 8 attacks at Strength 8 and Damage 3 going to be making a mess of most medium infantry there, and certainly punch up against heavier targets too. Then for the rest of the army, there's two units of corn berserkers used, one unit of 10 and one unit of 5, I guess one would go with the Master of Executions and one with Khan the Betrayer. It is quite nice to see Khan as a genuinely competitive choice again, he was kind of underwhelming when he cost more, but since Games Workshop gave him a nice decrease, it's just genuinely good value as a fighty lord with some big rerolls. Those two units move up the board in rhinos to get to those central objectives and could potentially get some influence on the blessings table. There's a unit of jackals that look like they'd be in a good place to hold down the home field objective. Again, that icon can allow them to re-roll a blessings dice once more. And then the other big threats of the list come from a massive amount of eight bound, one regular unit of three of them with the scout and they have a lacerator's champion. And then two terrifying units of the exalted eight bound with the Feel No Pain, the Deep Strike, and the Chain Fist that can make a mess of the heaviest targets in the game. Potentially you could have all these units scouting thanks to the presence of Lord Invocatus for an absolutely enormous melee alpha strike there. I guess in the right situation, one of the Exalted units wouldn't be unreasonable to use with Rapid Ingress as well, I suppose. The list does go very heavy on the Exalted 8 bound. Again, they do seem to be a bit of a heavy lifting staple at 150 points, so 50 points per model. A toughness 6 with 3 wounds and a 6 plus feel no pain, and they get to strike with a flurry of strength 14, AP 3 and damage 2 attacks, utterly ruinous to most vehicles out there, though they can just attack with some eviscerator attacks as well if they just want to clear out some hordes. A chance to prevent fallback is also just enormously disruptive for them as well, if they can get into combat in the midst of an enemy formation and they really want to fall back away from you, there's a reasonable chance they might not be able to if they fail a leadership test. That could be absolutely game-changing in the right circumstances, as well as preventing these horrendously destructive models from getting shot. Overall, really quite terrifying. Seems like the list is in a position to just cause some melee carnage right in the opponent's deployment zone from the start of the game if they want to. And even if they can overcome the first blows of the enemy, the chance for Angron to come back is pretty devastating in later game as well, and could be absolutely game-changing or game-winning if that does happen as well then and there, never mind everything else going on. Seems that with so many rounds in the event, this list went through the majority of tough matchups in Warhammer 40k right now. In order, the list seemed to have beaten Death Guard, Grey Knights, Eldari, Chaos Space Marines, Dark Angels Unforgiven Detachment, Chaos Demons, Dark Angels Vanguard, and then a rematch with the Dark Angels Unforgiven once more in the overall grand final of the tournament. Overall, really cool to see World Eaters doing this well, and looks like an utterly terrifying list in the hands of the right player. Otherwise though, I thought it could be interesting just to take a look at a few other variant takes, other World Eaters lists that have done well at tournaments over the past weekend. All of these lists have gone 4 wins to 1 loss at various tournaments, and do a few things similarly, but a few things really quite different. This first one was run by a Taylor Davis, who used it to take 4th at a V for Volkite Grand Tournament, 4-1 against 40 players, with the only loss being to Chaos Marines Round 3. 
Most of the character selections are exactly the same as the big winning list, there's just no Khan here. It looks like there's one Rhino gone, one unit of Berserkers dropped, and no Khan the Betrayer, and in exchange for that, there's been a unit of Spawn picked up, a second unit of Scouting regular 8 bound, and an extra unit of Jackals, so going a bit heavier on the objective scoring front there. I can see how it would be pretty helpful to have a few more units just ready to do secondaries and things like that, rather than having to divert some of the massive alpha level threats away from things, or just focus entirely on destroying the enemy like the first list, though I guess you are missing one very scary threat in terms of the Rhino and Berserkers. Otherwise though, this one looks like they went through Dark Angel's Ironstorm, Eldari, the Lost to Chaos Marines, Black Templars from the Index, and then Thousand Sons in the last round. One of the other staples in the HQ section that we hadn't touched on yet was Lord Invocatus. He's now 140 points and has dropped a bit since the edition first came out, and is generally quite a scary lord on his own stats alone. Toughness 6, 8 wounds with a 2 plus save, and a 4 plus invulnerable. And he can scout forward 6 inches, and gives two other units nearby the scout special rule as well, potentially leading a charge of some very terrifying 8 bounds, and positioning them for first turn death shenanigans. His melee is pretty terrifying as well, usually with 8 attacks at the charge, at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2. He's got some good movement to allow him to range out the front of an 8 bound unit if it makes sense, and he also allows the unit to fall back and shoot and charge, though I think that's a little bit more situational. Scouting on exalted 8 bounds does seem pretty terrifying, not really too hard to see how he's cropping up in competitive lists with that. Next up, and perhaps for the most divergent of the list that did well over the past weekend, is this list by an Alistair McNichol, who used it to take 5th at the Hogtowner 2023 event, going 4-1 against a 36-player tournament. Though it sounds like he wasn't really too far off winning the entire thing, the only loss was to the tournament-winning guard list on round 5. This one's going for a very, very different approach, with just a massive focus on Cornate Big Stuff. The highlights of the list are perhaps Angron, a Lord of Skulls, and an allied Bloodthirster with Great Axe. Just starting out there, that's going to be three absolutely enormous threats that are going to absorb enemy anti-tank firepower, and then we just might not have enough resources to deal with all of them. All three can absolutely wreck the vast majority of standard-sized units in the game in a single round of combat, and while it does mean that you're sacrificing a lot in terms of objective scoring and having other units for board control, the amount of carnage that those guys could cause is going to be pretty immense. Otherwise, for the rest of the list, there's that Lord on Juggernaut with the favourite of Corn for the rerolls for the Blessings again. 10 Jackals with a Skull Smasher, Maul and Icon. And then 12 8 bound total. 3 individual units of 3 of them with the Scouts and the Lacerators. And then 1 unit of the Exalted Variant with the Chain Fist on the Champion. I feel like this is a list that's going to please Corn quite a lot. Just sheer amounts of raw damage here. And I feel like unless your opponent's got a pretty great amount of anti-tank, they're going to be in some big trouble. The Corn Lord of Skulls is perhaps one of the most interesting choices on the World Eater's side, and maybe not entirely commonly run in tournament lists, as there are pretty big commitments, particularly if taking Angron already, and 500 points in any one model is pretty big. For the investment though, you do get a very chunky defensive profile, toughness 13 with 24 wounds, a 3 plus save and a 5 plus invulnerable, and then some pretty spectacular weapon stats to go with that. The Great Cleaver has strength 16, AP 4 and damage 8 on its strike mode, though it can go for sweeps and have a more anti-space marine type profile. Kind of unusual for World Eater's list to enjoy quite so much fire support as well. The Gore Storm Cannon on this one is pretty threatening with a whole load of shots at strength 10 and damage 3. And in Alistair's list he chose to back it up with the Skull Hurler, 2d6 shots at strength 14, AP 3 and damage 3 for the main cannon. It's perhaps just a bit all eggs in one basket, but it seems to have worked out here. There's going to be plenty of armies that aren't going to be able to deal with this anytime particularly quickly, particularly with Angron and a Bloodthirster winging about. Finally for the fourth list, this one's by Ryan Cherowich, who used it to take 8th at Atomic City Warzone, again going 4-1, this one in a 50-player tournament. This one's maybe going a bit more traditional tournament list, Angron Lord Invocatus, the Juggernaut Lord with the Favour, and the Master of Executions with the Berserker Glaive. Just the one unit of Corn Berserkers in the Rhino, 10 Jackals, and then for interesting choices, he's gone a bit heavier on the Spawn with two units of two of them, and then gone heavier on the Exalted 8-bound as well. There's one unit of regular 8-bound here, and then a pretty massive 12 of the Exalted variant, one big unit of six, and then two of three. Again, it definitely looks like a list that's got the damage output to see it through. Again, looks like this one lost to a Chaos Space Ruin list in round three, and otherwise beat in order, Sisters of Battle, Tyranids Vanguard, some more Chaos Space Marines, and then Astra Militarum in the last round. Overall, it's maybe not seeming like too bad a time to be a Servant of the Blood God right now, 
Really quite cool to see some World Eaters success and some nice hyper-violent lists charging their way towards the enemy. They're definitely very dynamic and probably going to be causing the opponent some big scares earlier in the game. Let me know your thoughts on the armies or how you're doing with World Eaters right now. Always interested to hear any other anecdotes as to how these were played or any other cool things that I've missed. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I'm sure I'll have more for the World Eaters in due course. And finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing a few videos early, semi-regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.